Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. I've got a potential budget option for you today. This is Cellier and Bellet's 150 grain soft point cut edge 30-06 load. And here is that box for that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain 30-06 load soft point cut edge. Nothing really on the back of these boxes. Here is your little ballistics table right here. Muzzle velocity is listed at 2,953 feet per second. We will see how close we get to that. And these boxes open from the top, not from the side like American ammo. So here, here we'll yank one out. And I want to show you this soft point cut edge bullet. It's very interesting. It has like a shoulder right here where the diameter changes. We'll be very curious to see how this stuff does in the ballistics gel. Let's go shoot it and see what it does. And the test rifle today sitting on this cooler here is my Tika T3X Superlight Stainless Chambered in 30 6 Of course, it has a 22.3 inch barrel. And up top, it's got a Leopold VX3HD 4.5 to 14 by 40 scope. And coming on back, of course, it's got one of my handmade leather cartridge cuffs holding five 30 6 shells. And flipping it around to the other side, it has my elk design on here. Check out my website masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And let's take a look at the velocities for that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft point cut edge bullet load out of the 30-06. Our high was 29.36, our low 29.04, and our average 29.23. Stuff is scooting right along. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft point cut edge bullet out of the 30-06. I wound up catching four bullets. I thought one of them had zinged out the side and the blocks had stayed together. So I went ahead and shot a fourth shot. Turns out we got all four. Let's go ahead and take a look. We have some a little bit variable performance. We got two right here, another right there, and then one back here. It looks like a, a, a good amount of that bullet has broken off. But going on back, we have quite, quite a bit of fragmentation. You can see all the chunks of lead right here. So these bullets, I mean, I'll be curious to dig them out and see what they weigh. Seems like we lost quite a bit of mass back here. Nevertheless, let's look at the penetration and the top of the block is a little bit dark. It's hard to see, but we got two right here. We'll give those 20 inches. We got one right here. We'll give that one eh, 16 inches and then one right there. That's at about the 14 and a half inch mark. A little bit of variability there. Let's look at the wound cavities. I mean, this stuff is, I mean, it'll make a mess of something with all those fragmentations and stuff in there. Looks like we got a pretty decent wound cavity track. Seems like they start to expand very rapidly at about the one inch mark. Coming on back by about the nine inch mark, they kind of die off and then just keep on penetrating. Let's dig it all out and see what it looks like. And here are those four Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft point cut edge bullets fired from the 30-06 recovered from the gel. I was able to recover four every once in a while I do that, so let's take a look at all four of them. Weight retention wise, we saw 75, 76, 89 and 86 grains respectively for an average of 81 and a half grains retained weight that works out to 54 percent weight retention so these things shed a lot of weight but for the most part they held together that one bullet there the third one from the left when i pulled it out of the gel the jacket and core did separate but for the most part they held together the other three the jacket and core stayed together for that third bullet, they were right there next to each other. It's not like they were separated. So definitely a lot of shed weight with this load. And then onto expansion, we saw 0 0.51, 0 0.6, 0 0.78, and 0.91 inches respectively for an average 
of 0.7 inches expanded diameter. A lot of variability in the expansion with these things. Overall, that works out to 2.3x expansion. Velocity wise, our high velocity was 2936. Our low was 2904 for an average of 2923 versus the factory build velocity of 2953. So we came in 30 feet per second slow on average. That's really not bad. That's a lot better than most ammo. And on to penetration, we saw 14 and a half inches, 16 inches, 20 inches, and 20 inches for an average of 17 and a half inches. A little bit on the light side for 150 grain 30 aught six and also a little bit variable. And kinetic energy wise with a 150 grain bullet going on average 2,923 feet per second, we're looking at 2,845 foot pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on this Cellier and Bellet 150 grain soft point cut edge load out of the 30-06. I think it performed about like a really budget soft point ammo would out of a 30-06, which is to say didn't have the greatest weight retention, had somewhat variable expansion. It was loaded pretty hot. We only came in 30 feet per second slow versus box spec. That's better than a lot of other loads that I've tested out of the 30-06. And then penetration wise also quite variable. So not the most consistent performance, kinda to be expected. It is a very budget load. So really what would I use this stuff for? Target shooting and practice, stuff like that. Will it kill a deer? Absolutely. I mean, a white-tailed deer is not that hard to kill. They're not that tough of an animal. But for my money, for you know my luck out in the woods, I think there are definitely better options than maybe this for hunting. But if you're just trying to go out to the range and have some fun with your 30-06, blast some ammo, ring some steel, something like that, I think it could be a great option for that. And check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. And there are hundreds of reviews on my website, so you can see what real hunters have to say about their mason leather gear. And also, tons of photos showing all the customizable options, including name, initial, and caliber stamping, as well as wild game designs and more. Everything is handmade by me right here in the USA. I would love to be a part of your hunt through my leather gear. And it helps support this channel so I can bring you more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests and lots of other cool stuff in the future. The link will be in the video description and the pinned comment, or you can just type masonleather.com into your web browser. And click one of these cards for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests.